This episode of The Dog Show features Stu Anderson. Stu is the founder of Beast and Buckle, a designer of reversible dog harnesses, dog collars, and leashes for discerning dogs and the humans who love them. Not only do Beast and Buckle have a range of unique and funky product designs, but they also donate 5% of sales to animal rescues. In the interview, we compare the differences between a walking harness and a collar. And Stu shares his insights into choosing the right product for your dog. Uh, Stu from Beast and Buckle, welcome to the dog show today. Thanks for coming on. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm so glad to be here. Yeah, it's great to have a fellow French Bulldog owner on. Um, I think we share something in common that, common that our French Bulldogs have inspired us to get into a business about dogs. So um, always good to meet people kind of doing the same thing from that perspective. But do you want to tell me a bit about how you actually got into business? Um, I believe it's got something to do with a French Bulldog named Clark. Oh, yeah. Clark, who's literally sitting like on my leg right now. <laughs> <laughs> He, he's, he's, his ears are burning right now. He's listening very carefully. Um, yeah, he is like, I mean, he's just, I, I, I can't even begin to describe how much he means to me. Um, you know, I got him a few years ago. He's three now. Um, I got him in 2017 when he was two months old. And like, it's been, I mean, it's been amazing. Cause like I was in a really, really bad place. My father had, um, died rather tragically had committed suicide and, um, I just, I didn't know what I was going to do. You know, like my career, I was trying to kind of like work through pain and wasn't happy at all. Just, you know, was not fulfilled, was really falling, uh, you know, month after month into a, into a darker, darker place. And so I decided to get a dog. I'd grown up with dogs. I really, I mean, I have always loved dogs. I just, you know, early in my career, I had been moving around a lot, which, you know, wasn't really great for having a dog. So it wasn't really the right time. I don't want to have a home that isn't right for a dog. Um, you know, I want to be, you know, I want to get a dog when it's, you know, the right time for them, not necessarily just, you know, like, because I want one. So the time was right. I, you know, my family convinced me and I started looking, you know, at, at rescues and puppies and, and different things. And, you know, as soon as I saw this, picture of Clark. I mean, it was, it was right. And it was kind of fortuitous because, um, you know, there'd been a few times in the process where I was ready to say, oh, okay, you know, I, you know, I like that dog. Let's, you know, is that dog available? And I was just a little bit too late, like two or three times. And then I was able to kind of get Clark just in the nick of time. Um, and it's worked out perfectly. He's been amazing. Um, and my life turned around from then. And, um, you know, since then I, thought about really what I wanted to do. And I wanted to spend time with my dog and I want to spend time focused on dogs. And that's why I started Beast and Buckle. I mean, I took my knowledge of, you know, working in advertising, running, you know, Facebook and Google ads for people and, and doing things on the agency side. And I said, I'm going to start my own e-commerce business. Um, and that was over two years ago now. Uh, I mean, we started in fall, uh, you know, fall in the United States, <laughs> uh, <laughs> autumn, we call it out here. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, we, you know, we launched in February of 2019. So we've been selling for a little under two years and I mean, it's been a whirlwind, mm. but I've been able to kind of, uh, you know, I've definitely been able to spend lots of time with Clark, which is the best part. Um, and I, I've also met, you know, hundreds and hundreds of dog owners who are super passionate about their dogs as well. Um, I've connected with various different re rescue organizations that you know, we've been able to help. So, uh, as far as like the goals that I've had since getting Clark in terms of what I wanted to do professionally, I've been able to fulfill pretty much all of those. Um, it's been great. Well, that's exciting. Look, I'm, I'm very sorry to hear about your dad, but I guess, um, if there is anything good to come out of that, it sounds like you've kind of, um, been inspired to, to, to take a good path with, well, you've obviously got Clark as a companion, but also now yeah. your career as well is on track. So, I mean, there's a, it's, it's a very sad story, I must say, but it's also, there's some light, right? There is. And I think the other thing too is, um, and this has been like really inspiring. I mean, it sometimes brings tears to my eyes is I get messages from people or they'll comment on like a social media post and they'll say, you know, I've, been through something similar and I know exactly how you feel. You know, my dog was there when I was at my, you know, like at my worst and, you know, when I needed somebody the most and, uh, you know, people let me down, but my dog never does. And, uh, just being able to, I mean, 
even just selfishly for a second, having other, you know, knowing that I'm not the only one going through something and having mm. that comfort brought to me is, is something a little like that alone is like, you know, really, really important to me, but it's also great to just be able to, you know, talk through things with people and, and help them and, and hear people's stories. Um, it's, it's really inspiring and I'm glad that what we're doing at Beast and Buckle has been able to kind of help people. Um, you know, that's, I, I never want to be kind of like doing something just, uh, you know, because it's a business or for money or something like when I can have that tangible effect and when I can really hear about, um, you know, the effect that something that we've done, whether it's a video or something, um, you know, whether it's a, when I hear that something that we've done has had an effect on somebody that's, that's that positive, um, yeah, it's just it's just really important to me. So it's it's yeah. interesting. I've I've you know noticed that the dog lover com community in in particular really rally around each other. Um, it's there's something oh, to yeah. do with like you know that that um, shared love for dogs. You know, makes you want to support everyone else that's doing doing something similar. So absolutely, I think you know, like I look at Facebook as like the kind of like meeting place for a lot of stuff these days. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> It's kind of like the, the the digital square where everybody kind of comes together and you know some people might like certain pages or be part of groups but like i found that like french owners are in like every frenchy group <laughs> because like they want all that content i think my news feed is probably about 80 percent french bulldog content mm. uh, you know nothing brings people together like you know, like dogs, because well, as soon as you identify another dog lover, especially somebody who's got like the same type of dog that you do. And I think, you know, from having a Frenchie that like Frenchie people are like super, super passionate yeah. about their <laughs> French. Like, I mean, it's just, you could talk all day with somebody having never met them before. Yeah. Um, just talking about your dogs, just talking about what they do. You can talk all day. So it's, it's pretty great. Well, you've got that, that the dog lover community, but then the Frenchie community is even more kind of, um, yeah, I guess, cra I'm gonna, I don't say crazy, but it's borderline like cult-like, I guess, in a way. <laughs> it, it, it's, I, you know, I, I think the best word to describe is just passionate. Yeah, passionate is uh, probably a nicer word than cult. <laughs> very, it's very, very passionate. And I mean, one, like, I think like, it's just like, Part of it is just the breed is just so wonderful. Mm. They're the cutest, most adorable, most loving dogs. All they want is like the affection of their owners. And like you'll notice me like repositioning myself throughout the thing. It's because Clark will literally try and like get closer and closer and cuddle up like closer and closer to me as much as he can. And he does this all day because mm. um, all he wants is to be around me and to cuddle up on me, sit on me, lean on me. Um, I mean, like that's the breed. And so like people, people love them for very understandable reasons. And I think the other thing that kind of gets people passionate, and this is the unfortunate side of the breed is just because there's so many medical issues that are associated with the breed. Um, and so many things that when you're going through them the first time, you don't really know how to handle them and you seek out support. Um, this builds a sense of community. So like, you know, IVDD is a very serious issue that is common um, in French Bulldogs, as well as, you know, some other dogs like Boston Terriers and Pugs, you know, a lot of the brachycephalic breeds suffer from this kind of thing, as well as like the breathing issues that are, you know, definitely affecting all of those breeds. Um, you know, when you're a first time French owner, you really, you know, unless you're like a veterinarian or you've had another dog from another breed that suffered from it, you don't really know exactly how to deal with it. And, you know, luckily we live in an age where not only is professional information available readily online, but you have access to all sorts of people who have been through this themselves. And so, you know, if you're having an issue like we've had with Clark, you know, Clark's had a couple flare-ups with IVDD that we've been fortunate enough to treat with, you know, anti-inflammatories and muscle relaxers and bed rest, uh, or sorry, crate rest. <laughs> for dogs. Uh, but I was able to go online immediately and reach out to people in groups and, you know, join groups specifically for IVDD to get as much information as possible um, because nothing matters to me more than, you know, having a, you know, a healthy and safe and happy Clark. Um, and like that really brings people together. You know, it's, it's, again, it's the shared experience. Um, you know, you're going through something stressful, you're going through something sad and hard and difficult. Um, but other, 
people are there to support you, to guide you, to help you get through it. Um, and so that is more common in the French bulldog community than it is in other areas. You know, the breed is, it has many great qualities, but you know, there's just a lot of health issues facing it and that's only increasing right now due to overbreeding. Yeah, definitely. And I, that's an interesting insight you make about that's kind of the layer which may bring people together more often because you're probably right. But I, I think as well, one thing about the health issues is is the unknown. When, As you said, when you're going through the first time, it, um, just having someone else that goes, oh, you know what, I've been through this as well um, and I've come out the other side knowing that or, or this is how I dealt with it can be can be comforting because when you're first dealing with an issue, whether it's IVDD or you know all of the other um, <laughs> challenges that Frenchies can face, um, yeah. So, Stu, just to, to to sidetrack a little bit and start talking about Beast and Buckle, because um, I'm sure we could talk about Frenchies for the next four or five hours, <laughs> um, maybe longer. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, so you started by creating dog harnesses. So what was it about harnesses that that attract like you? St- why, why did you start making harnesses rather than collars or, or some other product for for French bulldogs? Yeah, I, it's a great question. I think for me, like probably the first inkling that that was the right product to do was uh, my sister had a French bulldog, and you know she bought you know from one of the bigger brands, um, and I was like, oh, you know it's fun. You know a lot of these harnesses have like designs, and they're you know a little bit. Uh, you know, higher quality than some of the stuff that you can get at, you know, pet stores, Amazon, you know, places where a lot of people are getting their stuff. Mm. And I remember her saying to me, she said, yeah, you know, they're kind of fun. I just wish there were some better designs out there. And so I thought about that. And then when it was time for me to get my Frenchie and when I was thinking about, you know, what I could do, what, what sort of business Clark and I could start together, <laughs> um, I remember that moment and I, and I talked to her again. I was just like, you know, how are you feeling about what's on the market? She's just like, he's like, yeah, well, there's some good stuff, I guess. But like, you know, there just isn't anything that really speaks to me. Mm-hmm. And so I, I thought about it. And I was like, well, here's my sister who's like very much like me, super, super passionate about her French bulldog and buys, you know, every accessory under the sun and, you know, is like just obsessed. And so if she's out there constantly looking for different things to buy for her Frenchie. Mm. And she can't find a harness with designs that really are fun for her, you know, make her happy, make her excited. You know, this is like, it's like, this is fashion. Like people get excited about clothing. This is like fashion for dogs. So like if, if there isn't something out there for her, who is like the easiest to please because she loves doing stuff for her Frenchie, then there's a market opportunity there. Mm. And so that's how we entered the, the harness market. We wanted something that, um, you know, people could get excited about, we wanted something that, you know, like I like to be creative and I like to work with creative people to, um, you know, to kind of do fun things. And so with harnesses, you kind of have that canvas, you can create this like kind of like fun or funky or kind of goofy pattern, um, or something that's like kind of like super cute or fashionable. Uh, and you can create something that people will want and get excited about. And so like the harness was kind of like the perfect fit for that. And it's, and it's grown from there. And now, you know, we do, you know, other products, but the harness is really kind of the core thing. Um, just because it's like, you know, I have a French bulldog and the French bulldog, uh, breed is probably the best market for harnesses. Mm. So, um, you know, cause more than any other breed, they need to be walking on a harness rather than walking on a collar. Um, and so we, it's grown from there, you know, we're, we're making it a, a few different types of harnesses now that we weren't making at first and we've started doing things like hoodies and poop bag holders and other accessories uh and we're working on some other stuff that's not out yet that i can't talk about but uh (laughs) the harnesses are they're just they're they're actually like fun like they're really fun to work on um and when you like the process of like finishing a design building it and then like seeing the first finished units like that feeling of excitement and satisfaction like that has not decreased at all in the two years since we first rolled off like the first beast and buckle products like off the assembly line like i think they're they're just that that has like it it, every single time like every single time i'm just like oh my god i'm so excited this is great (laughs) 
Uh, like we have some new stuff for 2020 that's coming in like uh, probably about a week. Mm. And like, I'm like counting down the days. My fiance gets sick of hearing about it. Cause I'm just like, yeah, I'm like really excited. Here's some pictures that I have. <laughs> like <laughs> it, it's, it's exciting. Cause like you're holding your, in your hands, something that you designed, something that you created. It's like, it's yours. Um, it's a surreal feeling. Um, and it's, it's a feeling that like, hopefully like this, this notion that like, I'm still going to be as excited about it every single time we do a new release. Like, I hope that never goes away. Um, it's a, it's a great feeling. Yeah, actually what we may as well just, while you're mentioning all of the colors yeah. and, and the designs, I mean, we may as well have, have a quick chat about that. Cause that's the one thing that kind of caught my eye with the brand <laughs> was just like so much personality and so many different unique designs, which I hadn't seen before. You know, you've got donuts and burgers and dinosaurs and tie-dye and all these bright and like, and for me, what it represented was the French Bulldog personality in a way, because they've just, they've got such a, a unique and I guess bright personality, which is hard to um, explain to someone that doesn't have a Frenchie, but someone that does have a Frenchie, I think would look at your harnesses and your products in, and aut- automatically kind of relate that to the personality of the French Bulldog. Yeah, I think that's a, that's actually a really good point. Um, you know, I always describe Frenchies as having like very like human personalities. They have expressive faces, they show emotions, but they're all like they're like goofy. Like they like to kind of like goof around. And so like the fun harnesses, um, or like just like the more like lighthearted stuff, I think serves, uh, you know, serves the market pretty well. And it's funny because like originally when we first launched we were like our thing was going to be that we were going to be a little bit more like fashion focused Mm. Our thing i I was like you know what we should try to do some more fashion patterns mix in obviously lots like the fun and kind of like more lighthearted stuff but offer some more of this because that's something that you know was missing in the market and we found very quickly that like we one liked working on the fun stuff a lot more and that they were just um you know for the most part doing a little bit better they were more popular with people and so we've we've really embraced that um and still you know focused on having things that look great they're not just fun but they're also like pretty cool uh you know like and we still have fashion patterns that do well we did a christmas plaid this year for the holidays that did very well um, but you know most of the, most of the time we're doing uh you know, we love doing food stuff you know we're we're in, we're in the United States and we love our food here. So <laughs> donuts, pizza, um, you know, we have some more stuff that's coming on the way that's going to be along like kind of that same vein. Um, and then just like thinking about what kinds of things people like and what could be fun on a harness. Like that's another thing that we like, yeah, it kind of like stresses you because you want to make sure that whatever you're designing is something that people are going to like mm-hmm. but at the same time you're just like oh what do people like like what can we what can we try um that's really cool and so that's how we come up with things like you know like dinosaurs or you know, we, we, in the past we've done like you know sailor theme or sports um it's fun um and like you know like the other like great thing about the business too is that people always submit ideas so we have no shortage of like good ideas that come from our customers. They're always like, oh man, you guys should do this. And like a lot of the time I'm just like, man, we should do that. <laughs> like that's a great <laughs> idea. And we know we have at least one customer here who will definitely buy it. So yeah, uh, there's like, there's no shortage of things that you can put on these harnesses. It's, it's great. Well, I think all you need to do is like observe your Frenchie for, you know, a couple of hours and you'd probably come up yeah. with a, a thousand different <laughs> ideas. <laughs> oh yeah. Clark, Clark is, is, uh, He's quite the muse because yeah. um, he's definitely one of those Frenchies that has that human personality. And he uh, um, one of the things that we're going to do in 2021 is uh, we're going to have him in and I in like more of our contents. We're going to do some videos, uh, some very, I would say, lighthearted, goofy videos of us to kind of promote some of the harnesses, which is something that people have been asking for. So I'm very nervous to do that. <laughs> But at the same time, I think like, you know, as long as he's up for it and he's not having like a flare up of IVDD and he can get around, uh, you know, filming something fun, I think we can we can probably give the customers what they want. <laughs> yeah, I think that'll be a bit of fun for you as well. It's probably like the the feeling of um, you mentioned when you kind of design a new harness and, and you get the designs in or, you know, you get the first product in. It might be some a, a similar feeling kind of when you produce a video as well. 
Yes, uh, definitely. Um, like when we filmed, you know, the main video that we have is the one that you, uh, I think I mentioned, you might've mentioned earlier. It's like a, you know, a video that's telling our story on our website. And that one is like, it was like a, it was a very, very hard video to film, you know, emotionally. Um, but like when it was done and I saw the finished kind of product, I was just like, yeah, it was that same feeling. It was like, man, this is something special. And, um, you know, it's inspired me to keep doing like the same kind of stuff and, um, you know, reaching out and creating content for people that might be, might've gone through the same things that I did in the past. Um, with this content coming forward, we'll probably do more content that speaks to, uh, you know, it takes a more kind of like serious tone and talks about like our values and, what we stand for as a company and, you know, like what we believe we should be doing aside from just kind of selling stuff. But I think like right now it's also time to kind of show off the kind of more lighthearted sense uh, or lighthearted side of, of, you know, me and Clark is like, we're two just incredibly goofy guys who have a good time running this business. And uh, yeah, I think it's, it's definitely time to show off a little bit more of that too. Yeah, for sure. And I think that, you know, obviously um, mirrors with, the style of, of product that you're selling as well. So, but um, absolutely. you mentioned, you mentioned earlier kind of, you know, the harness for a French bulldog is, yeah. is a more appropriate walking apparatus than, <laughs> than the, the collar. Yes. Um, why is that? And there are other, are there other breeds you probably mentioned the, the flat face breeds and things like that, that um, leading you down that path, I guess. But Definitely. yeah, why, 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 why harnesses over collars though? What makes them a, a better walking Option. Yes, I mean, a, a veterinarian will give a very technical, uh, like medical, um, like very thorough technical medical, like uh, description of it. I'll give you kind of like the, the the easy kind of layman's uh, kind of description. But essentially, it, it's physiological, the way that their bodies are structured and where, I um, mean, you know, like if they're pulling or if they're kind of even just walking forward, where <clears throat> kind of like the uh, where the collar or harness is going to kind of like push or pull against their bodies, like where that weight displacement is going to occur. Um, you know, it can cause like a collar can cause a lot of issues for them just because, you know, like the, where their throats are, how they breathe, um, you know, the way their bodies are shaped. So a harness is going to support them much, much better. Um, it's going to have like, uh, you know, long term, they're going to be much less likely to suffer issues with, um, you know, their backs or have, you know, exacerbated breathing issues. Um, I think you're going to see a trend where dogs overall are using harnesses more often. You're already seeing it even for large breeds, um, as vets realize more and more just how much better a harness is because, you know, it, it really is like, you know, if a dog is pulling, especially a large dog with like high pull strength, cause that's really how, you know, wearable dog accessories are collars and harnesses sorry collars and harnesses specifically are kind of evaluated you know it's based on the pull strength that they can withstand mm -hmm. but like in a harness that pull strength is kind of spread across the entire chest rather than just a very small section of the mm -hmm. throat um and when you hear it described like that you're like you know that probably sounds like something that's pretty good for any dog um it's just like it's these dogs specifically need that um you know collars bad um it's just it's just not not the right thing to have them if you're leash walking them you know if they're in the backyard and they're running around off leash yeah you know you can put a collar on them have their id tags mm. but if, you know, if they're walking on leash you do not want them especially since frenchies i'm sure you know are <laughs> a bit stubborn <laughs> they like to fall you know if, if they don't want to go somewhere they're going to plop right down like you you don't want to have you know be training them or guiding them on a leash or having them pull on a leash and have that kind of like pulling right against their neck. It's not good. So, um, you know, the harness is kind of the first step. And then beyond that, you know, there's, there's different types of harnesses that even, you know, within the same breed dogs can use based on their individual needs as well. Yeah. I think I've heard it described as stress distribution before. So like yeah. kind of Rather than having all the stress on the throat or the yeah of the of the dog, it's just distributing it across the chest where they've, um, you know, it, it, it's allowed to be distributed, I guess. Yeah, but, um, yeah, it's the same kind of thing. Stress, weight, it's the force of yeah. weight. It's it's um, it's basically, yeah, you don't want, 
Um, you don't want all of that up against a dog's throat. Um, I guess it's it's not you, good. You mentioned as well. I think some people might opt for a collar anyway, so they can have the ID tags um, on their dogs as well as a harness. Is that something that you, you've noticed with your customers as well? Yeah, we have a lot of people that will buy both the collar and the harness. Mm. Um, we have some people that will put both on at the same time, um, which is you know it's interesting. Some some do it for uh, fashion reasons, like because I've asked, I was like. Hey, you know, we're trying to learn more about how people use our products. You can tell me about this. There's like, well, we like, just like the way it looks. And, you know, that's pretty cool too. Um, we have, you know, a D-ring on our harnesses so that people can throw ID tags on there as well. Uh, but most of the time, I think it's, it's people want the ability to use either one for the right circumstances. So a lot of the times, because we get tons of Instagram pictures that we're tagged in, um, you'll see that out on the walk, they're wearing the harness. Most of the time they're wearing the harness. And then if they're kind of like lounging around at home or they're clearly in like kind of an enclosed backyard, you know, they might be wearing the collar. Mm -hmm. But um, most of the time people, I think, you know, especially in the in the brachycephalic community, you know, Boston Terriers, Pugs, Frenchies, um, they've got the harness on almost exclusively. And, uh, you know, collars, we, we do sell them, uh, but they're not necessarily like a big seller for us. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have bundles that offer them. We sell them individually, but most people are coming to us for the harnesses. Um, you know, it's just like, you know, if you have a Frenchie, you know, and you know, you don't want to spend a ton on dog products and you'd rather have more harnesses, you're probably not buying collars. So, um, yeah, I think that, and I think that's the direction a lot of breeds are going to start to go. I guess it depends on your situation as well. For example, I live in an apartment, so when we're at home, my dog doesn't wear anything. Um, because you're inside, it's fine. It's not a big deal. But if you're in a yard where you could potentially get out, maybe you'd prefer an ID tag and, and you probably don't want your dog wearing a harness all the time, right? Like it's more so just for walking and things like that. So I guess there is the benefit of the, that from that perspective. But when it comes to w walking on a leash, walking and things like that, the harness is probably the best option. Yeah, you know, it's funny. People always ask me, like, is, is Clark just constantly cycling through, you know, like 30 different harnesses? Does he just have a closet full? <laughs> and I said, Clark's, Clark's a normal dog. He likes to wear nothing. Um, yeah. You know, if he's at home right now, you know, he's with me. He's not wearing a harness. Um, you know, the harnesses are for when he is, you know, going outside, or going for walks. Um, it's, it's for the right time. And um, I think when I tell people how to properly use a harness, because there's a lot of like new French owners who want to make sure that they're not just putting them on their dog properly, but they're also like using them properly. I say, Hey, you know, like you don't have to put this on him all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, your dog really should be wearing it when he needs to be wearing. Cause like your dog doesn't want to wear anything, even something that's super comfortable. Um, you know, like most dogs are just going to want to run around with nothing on. Uh, there are some dogs that will literally, you know, we get some messages from people that are like, yeah, you're, stuff so comfortable like our dog likes to sleep in them and i'm just like well that's great but like just you know um make sure that like they you know because like anytime a dog wears anything for an extended period of time um you know it can cause potential skin issues and things like that uh, so just something for people to kind of be aware of but um you know if you're using a high quality harness um whether it's you know one of mine or somebody else's like if it's a high quality harness um, it will be comfortable for your dog to wear. It'll be like as comfortable as possible, I guess, for your dog to wear. He's always generally going to prefer to wear nothing though. So <laughs> yeah, Get, going nude around the house, I think is their, their preference, but <laughs> yeah, part of the, part of the Frenchie personality, just roaming around like nobody's watching. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you mentioned before about picking the right harness. So what kind of features am I looking for when I'm picking a harness from an dog? It's interesting. I think like, you know, obviously it's, there's some stuff that's like very breed specific. So, you know, if you have a big dog, um, you need to make sure that whatever harness you're putting on your dog will support its weight, its pull strength. Um, you know, the physiology of a large dog and a small dog is not just kind of like, in some cases, it's not just the case of like a dog being bigger and therefore being like an increment of like I'm trying to think of the right term, like like incrementally stronger. Like the actual structure of a lot of these dogs that are bigger 
is different, which means the physiological needs of a harness is going to be different. Mm-hmm. So you want to get a harness that's really built for a larger dog. Yeah. Uh, you know, the smaller sm- and, and like small to medium sized dog market is really where the majority of harnesses kind of exist right now. Um, there's plenty for big dogs, but most of them are small and medium sized dogs. And so when you're looking there, I think like it, 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 there's different options for some individual needs. So there's some, you know, the traditional harness goes over the head. You know, it's usually single side. You know, they have some mesh um, either on both sides or on the inside. You have a strap that goes around the back, um, and that's kind of like your your simple harness. Um, you'll see plenty of different options in pet stores, on Amazon, at stores like mine. Um, that will suit many small to medium sized breeds as long as it's high quality. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you have a dog with like, um, you know, some dogs are really finicky about stuff going over their head or touching their ears, um, or some dogs have like thick necks or they have a head that is proportionally just a little bit differently sized to their body Mm. um they might need a different type of harness so there's some some harnesses that have adjustable necks um these will be other single side harnesses you'll have an additional strap or two straps on the neck where you can actually loosen it and tighten it based on your individual dog's needs so um you know those are great you know if you have a dog that's super finicky uh stop touching your ears it's really hard to use a lot of conventional harnesses Mm. so these allow you to fully loosen it up put it over the dog's head like you know nothing was there um it's it would be like putting on like an extra large t-shirt on like a small person and then like tightening uh so that it's then comfortable and providing proper support um you know similarly if you have a dog with a kind of like elongated chest like some like a good example of this would be like a like a dachshund maybe Mm. a corgi um, but different breeds, like some some dogs, kind of one off, just might have like a longer um, longer space between like kind of like the base of their chest and like up by the head and neck mm-hmm. area. Um, step in harnesses can be better for them just because they're built a little bit more for that than a traditional harness. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I have some customers that have dachshunds that fit our harnesses great. I have others where there's like, hey. Uh, it's just not long enough. I'm just like, Hey, we don't make a step in harness right now, but you know, here are some ones we recommend. This is what you should do. Uh, you know, I think the, it, it's really sad. Like sometimes where I have to tell somebody like, Hey, I know you love this harness that we make, but it's not going to be right for your dog because of this thing. The number one thing that you always look for in a harness is not necessarily what it looks like, but does it suit your dog's health needs? Yeah. Um, always make sure that the dog's health is number one, um, because their health and comfort, you know, if you put them in the wrong type of harness, you know, that and that can even be, you know, the right kind of harness, but just too tight or too large. Um, you know, like those things can cause problems. Um, you know, it, it's basically it would be like the same thing for a human being. Like if you have a um, like if you have shoes like let, I have flat feet and I have joint issues, mm-hmm. like if I wear shoes that are too large for me or they don't provide the right arch support. Um, I'm going to exacerbate the issues that I have already and might develop new ones. It's the same thing with these. This is like a support item. It's providing support to their bodies. So you want to make sure that something fits right and is built for their type of body. Now, luckily, most breeds, you know, it's just a matter of finding the right size. Um, You know, most harnesses out there, they're well constructed to cover the needs of most small to medium sized breeds. And you can kind of pick something. Um, there's tons of options out there on the internet. I mean, there's hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands and thousands of different designs available in high quality harnesses. Um, but just always remember that your dog's health and safety is, is priority number one. Yeah. As you said, it's much harder to find the right harness for, you know, a dog that has a different structure. So, Mm -hmm. you know, the bulldog breeds have the bigger heads and, you know, like a a bit of a, a stout structure, whereas like the dachshunds and things, they have the longer bodies. Um, so I guess that's where the challenge comes in. If you've got, if your dog has a unique structure, whether it's one of those breeds or another breed, which is just a different structure, you really need to kind of do your research and try out some harnesses. And then once, once you're happy with a, a brand or a style, then you can kind of, you know, get excited about getting all the beautiful designs at Beast and Buckle. <laughs> and it's, it, it's funny because like, even for my company stuff, cause we work with our manufacturing partner to develop all the products and working with them on sizing, like my dog, Clark, who's, you know, my little co-founder, he uh, is actually kind of like an interesting fit on our own products. Hmm. Um, And I had to kind of, I know that sounds weird, um, 
but like he's got a very unique body shape for a Frenchie. And so I knew if I made something for him, it wouldn't, it wouldn't necessarily um, be like the ideal fit for most French Bulldogs or most Boston Terriers. Uh, now it fits well. It's just like we have like based on his weight, most most dogs that would be shopping with us would be wearing like an extra large uh, reversible harness. He wears a large because his body is like um, like if, you, if you're a French hunter, if you saw him, like most of the time when we meet other French Bulldogs, he is like a full head longer and taller mm. than most other Frenchies. He's very tall, very lean. He looks like a Boston Terrier, but you can tell he's a Frenchie. Okay. Uh, and so like he he's one of the only dogs that we have where, you know, like we have two we have a few different harness lines two of which size very similarly. And he's one of the only dogs where like he actually wears two different sizes um, in these two lines that size very, right. <laughs> uh, very similarly. So it's kind of interesting when people are just like, you know, do you have any, you know, customers or dogs that, you know, that kind of like have some sizing issues. And I was like, yeah, mine. <laughs> like, uh, I know it's yeah. my own company, but you know, like I, uh, I'm the example. Yeah. So, um, but it's all, it's all a matter of kind of trial and error. It's just like humans, you know, like I, I think most people are probably anybody who's bought something, um, you know, from a clothing store online has probably returned something cause it didn't fit. Like, I don't think I've ever met one person who has got a 100% success rate ordering clothes online. Um, you know, you're going to order something, try it on your dog and you know, you'll know pretty much right away if it's going to be a good fit or not. And then you just, you know, return it, exchange it and, you know, try to find something, Something different. In most cases, if you find a company that you like, um, you know, it's one exchange from one size to the next, whether that's one size smaller, one size bigger, and you're good. Um, and then you can, you know, figure out how many harnesses you need, how often you want to buy one, um, you know, what do you want to get with it. Um, but, you know, the size thing is is most important once you've kind of identified which type of harness you want. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so with Beast and Buckle, you've donated, you know, over twenty thousand dollars worth of product to rescue organizations. You also donate a portion of your profits too. Um, what made you choose uh, that as as an avenue for the business? Um, it was. It's very important to me, just because, like, I, you know, when you're working in this space, and especially with French bulldogs, I mean, like, it's a. I, I've always cared so much about animals and dogs, and there's so many animals that have. Um, no one to speak for them, no one to help them. Um, you know, they're, you know, like dogs rely on us to take care of them. Mm. Um, you know, kids, you have one, yeah, you have to take, it, take care of it, but eventually it becomes able to feed itself. It becomes <laughs> able to make its own dinner, take care of itself. Dogs, you know, that that's not the case. They rely on you. And so when you have dogs that have special needs, health issues, you know, they get dropped at shelters. I mean, there's so many tragic stories. Um, there's so many dogs that need help and not enough people, um, you know, doing enough to help them. There's a lot of great people and a lot of organizations doing great things, uh, but not, of the, not enough of them are properly funded um, and not enough of them have enough recognition. And so for me, you know, I've been very fortunate in, in my life to have success in my career. And so I don't need to make all the money in the world. I have pretty simple hobbies, simple interests. Um, you know, I'm never looking to, you know, own a yacht or some mansion or something like that. For me, the real value is, you know, yes, I, I do need to put a roof over my head and support my family, but, you know, I, I want to be able to make a difference in the lives of all these animals. And so, you know, the reason that that's so important in the French Bulldog community is because, you know, with all these health issues that they're having, you know, there's a lot of them that are surrendered because they're, you know, their owners can't afford their medical bills or, you know, just like many dogs. And this is, you know, it's awful, but it does happen. You know, a lot of them are just abandoned um, by people because, oh, you know, it's a senior dog and I want to get a puppy for the kids for the holidays. So we're going to take our 10 year old dog and drop them at a shelter or, you know, their medical bills n might not be the issue, but they just don't want to take care of them anymore. I mean, there's so many awful things to happen to these sweet, sweet dogs who literally want nothing more than just the love of their families. And so um, we find the organizations that are having the best effect, like, like the most helpful effects on the, in the lives of these dogs and say, how can we help? And so early on, the, the easiest way for us to do that is, you know, as a growing business who, um, you know, who's tight on cash is like, hey, we're producing products. Um, you know, we are going to donate as much as possible. Um, you know, to these organizations, because I don't think you're going to find a rescue or an organization that works with rescues who is ever going to be 
who's ever going to say, yeah, we've got enough leashes or collars or harnesses. Like they'll always, always take them because they're like, they're always in need. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and then like what we've, what we do now actually is we're not just doing the percentage of profits. We've actually changed that to, um, so if somebody places an order on our website, um, we are donating 5% of that sale directly to charity. And so in the holiday season, we've, we've been able to raise tons of money. Um, and make a huge difference. You know, we are primarily working with an organization called the Nala Foundation that helps um, people who rescue French bulldogs pay medical expenses mm. because that's the number one barrier to people adopting Frenchies is they're worried that since the dog was most likely surrendered due to medical issues, they're worried about being able to cover those medical costs. And so this organization steps in and says, hey, if you if you adopt this dog, we're going to help you with that so that we can make sure that this dog has a loving home. Because obviously, you know, you don't want, you know, a, a French bulldog you know, sitting in a shelter or bouncing from, you know, foster to foster. You want them in their forever home. And so we've been able to raise a ton of money for that. And then, you know, I think at this point, I believe we're above 25000 potentially above $30,000 in retail value in terms of how much just pure product we've donated. Um, hundreds of harnesses hundreds of leashes, hundreds of collars. Um, and like, that's, I mean, that's the stuff. I mean, yeah, I get excited when we're like, you know, sales are good and we have new stuff coming. People are happy about that. But like when I hear back from organizations and they're just so thankful that we've, um, you know, made a difference in, in taking them from like needing a ton of equipment to needing nothing really. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, there's no better feeling like that's that's what keeps the business going even on the days that are really difficult it's just it, it knowing that we're we're making that difference it, it's huge yeah it's great that you're giving back to i mean dogs give us so much and obviously clark in particular exactly. has helped you through some tough times so giving back to to that community is is very good i mean i i know the effect that my dogs had on me and if i can do even 10% of what he did for me for, you know, some other dogs out there, um, I'll, I'll be very, very happy. So, I mean, dogs do everything for us. We don't deserve dogs. Dogs are, they're too good. They're so much better than humans. And like, they're, they're just full of love. <laughs> and so like, I, I think like, I, I try to live my life based on the mantra of like, you know, be the person that your dog thinks you are. Mm -hmm. um, like that's, that's how I try to live. And I think if we, keep doing what we're doing with Beast and Buckle. I think I'm at least on my way there. And then if we can inspire other people to donate to these organizations, make them aware that there's organizations out there that are helping dogs, um, you know, I I mean, that alone uh, kind of like like makes the work worthwhile. Um, it's, it's, it's a really great aspect of, of running this business. Be the person your dog thinks you are. I like that. <laughs> Cool. Um, okay, so where can people go to find out more about Beast and Buckle? Um, check out your story and also see all your cool harnesses and other products. Um, the best best place to buy our stuff is on our website, um, www.beastandbuckle.com. Uh, if you're in the United States, we are also available on Petco's website, um, petco.com. They're a big retailer here in the, in the States. We're not available in their physical stores yet, but we do sell online for them. But of course, we would love to come see you at beastandbuckle.com. And if you reach out to us on our chat tool or call us or email us, you will speak directly to me. Um, you know, we're a growing business that's achieved a lot of success, but we always answer all of our messages personally. Me and Clark sitting there at a desk talking to people like no matter no matter what, you don't even have to want to buy anything. If you just want to talk about your dog, you can call us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ask things about their Frenchies. I'm sure you get a bunch of questions about that now. <laughs> oh, I, I, those are my favorite calls. I love it when there's like, hey, we want to have one of your harnesses in the future. We're thinking about getting a Frenchie. I'm just like, all right, let's talk. Let's do it. <laughs> um, and I sing the praises of the dog. So, um, but no matter what, if anybody wants to call us, I literally will be the person answering the phone. That's good to know. So, I'll make sure we share the website and the socials and, and everything um, in the show notes and everywhere we publish the episode. But Stu, thanks so much for coming on the dog show today. I've had a lot of fun talking about Frenchies and harnesses and hearing about your story. Um, you're doing some great stuff with, with rescue organizations as well. So thanks so much for coming on. Oh, it's my pleasure. I, I can't tell you how happy I am to record the show today. I'm just sorry that I, I recorded it with the mustache I'm growing here over the holidays. It's <laughs> <laughs> Adds a little bit of character. Why not? 
I, I, I have a face for radio, I think is the way they usually put it. But, <laughs> um, you know, I occasionally make an appearance on video here. So this is a, a special, special occasion. I, but I'm, I'm very, very thankful you had us on. And thank you so much. Great. Well, have a good day. You too.